Hello fellow doodlers, today I will be passing on my knowledge of bodies to you. I'm not an expert on this, but we'll see where this goes. Let's get into it then. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about is the chest. In my opinion, the chest is what defines how the rest of the body is going to look. So I use basically three shapes for my chests. The first one is sort of like a mug or a teacup shaped chest. The second one is a circle. And this last one is sort of like a triangular, upside down triangular shape. I'm not sure how to describe this. There's probably an actual name for it, but I have yet to see that name. But I typically use the teacup shape for my men's chest, um, the circle for my women's chests, and this last weird shaped one for my teenagers, the adolescent years, since they don't really have any curves or muscles yet. Here I have drawn them out in the body form. So as you can see, they each have a different look to them. And you can hopefully tell what, what sort of person or gender they are by the body shape. Alright, so now you've probably noticed at the pelvic area, I have a shape that kind of looks like this. This shape basically stays the same throughout all the body types. However, I tweak it just a little bit occasionally. Like if you notice on the man's, it's wider, and on the woman's, it's curvier. While on the adolescent's, it's pointier and smaller. It just depends on how big the waist you're going for is. Alright, and now there's this little ball. This is the rotation ball. So the rotation ball is basically the point in your stomach where you can rotate on. It's where you bend over and bend to the side. It basically just gives you a point where you can bend. For some reason I find it easier. So that way when you bend, both sides draw towards that circle. Now, especially when it comes to women, there are some there are body types. I know many women like stress about their body types, but in art, it is only stressful if you can't figure out what body type to give your character. There are a few basic ones that I draw, um, the hourglass, the pear, the spoon, please excuse my crappy drawing of a spoon, I don't think I draw spoons very often, never, and the adolescence shape that is for beanpole characters. Put into body form, they look something like this. The hourglass is where the chest and the bottom are come out to about the same size. The pear is where the bottom is bigger than the chest, the spoon is where the chest is bigger than the bottom, and the adolescence is where it's basically no curves whatsoever. Alright, now to move on to arms and legs. First off, I want to point out these. These are joints, and they will tell you where your arm and leg can bend at. This middle point I call the limbs or the, like I know the whole thing is a limb, but I don't really know what to call the in-between. But usually you have a little stick up of the elbow to show which direction the whole arm is. And the same goes for the leg. You have the joints, the ligaments, is that what it's called? I don't know. And then the knee instead of an elbow. Something I want to bring to your attention is the curves of the leg and the arm. If you'll notice, this side is curvier, while this side is a lot straighter. It's not much noticeable on the top leg, but on the bottom leg you can really see it, where this side curves and the other side is straight. This makes it easier to tell where the leg is pointing, I guess. Um, it also makes it look a bit more realistic. On the upper leg, the side that is on the same as the knee is curved, which makes the bottom straight. 
On the bottom, the opposite side of the knee is curved while the top is straight. However, if you're drawing a more front-facing leg, I usually curve both sides, but make this one side straight while the other one curves. It just depends on which direction it is facing even a little bit, because it's really hard to stand totally straight and make it look natural. Also, one side of the knee will be poking out more than the other, even if it's straight on. If it's straight on, I usually draw the knee sticking out on both sides, but if it's slightly tilted to any other direction, the knee will stick out just a little bit. And the same goes for the arm. Straight, curved, curved, straight. And you can play around with how curvy or how straight this is. It just depends on the body design that you're going for. All right, now to put it all together. I typically start with the head first, so go ahead and pop that head in. I made another video on how to draw heads. If you think that might help you, you can go watch that. And then we're going to draw this line here. I want to talk about this line later on in my part two video that I'm hoping to make next week. But this line tells you where your shoulder is. This line that I just drew all the way down is the perspective line. And I, again, will talk about that in another video. Choose your chest shape. I decided to go with the adolescent shape because that's what I've been drawing a lot lately. And then pop in your rotation ball. So since the chest is such a bigger size than the other ones, the space in between the chest and the pelvis is going to be a bit smaller than if you chose a different body size. At this point, I just eyeball how long I want the upper body to be. It depends on how tall you want the character or how short you want the character. You have to mess with a lot of stuff in the upper body to make it look natural for the legs. Your elbows will go somewhere around here. Depending on how slouchy or strict or rigid your character is, it just sort of depends where you put the elbows. The lower down, the slouchier it looks. The higher up, the stricter, the more rigid it looks. Pop in the arms that I told you about. And if you notice, these arms are a bit too short. That's because I want to talk about proportions again in part two. Right now, I just want you to see how the body fits together. Okay, now for my most hated part. I really do not like drawing legs. They always look weird. But there are different ways that you can draw legs too. If you notice here, I'm drawing them pretty straight. That's because in the adolescent shapes, I usually draw them like this to give them a more gangly look. Also, the space in the space of the top of the head to the bottom of the pelvis is relatively the same as the length of the legs. And I usually use this as just a guideline and don't follow it to the point because sometimes the legs will look a bit too long or too short and I'll have to mess with it. Another thing is the upper leg is actually longer than the lower leg. Not by much, but just enough. But I still curve the side opposite to the knee just a little bit. And then pop your feet in. I don't really know how to talk about feet I really don't know. It's this triangular shape that curls up at the end, I guess. I don't draw detailed feet. I've never drawn a bare foot before. So if you look, his head, his her head, is off to one side a little more than the other. And while that does bug me, it's easy to fix if you catch it early on. And if you look, we use the same basic shapes as, as I talked about before. However, if you're drawing a woman or a curvier body shape, then you're going to want to draw the body a little differently. Put your head in and use the circular shape for her chest. It doesn't have to be too big or too wide, it just depends on how big you want her chest to be. I usually don't draw it any bigger than this. Put in your rotation ball. The rotation ball is actually pretty important when you're drawing a woman because the waist goes in towards it. And then have it come right back out to another circle to make her look curvier. Like so. And that's basically a woman's body. 
this is more of an hourglass shape in case you were wondering. And that's it. So thank you for watching. I hope this helped in a bit and I hope that anything that I talked about will make more sense in the next video. And with that, that's all. Bye!